Welcome back to the Glass Garage, where we make detail and simple. My name is Sock, and today I have something special for you guys. So today we have a 2023 BMW X5 coming in to get a ceramic coating, and we will be using the DIY detail lineup. It's brand new. The owners literally took off the plastic off the vehicle. It just got delivered. He's driving it over here as we speak. It's a charcoal black BMW X5, but we will be doing the ceramic coating using the DIY detail lineup. He will be getting the DIY detail pro grade ceramic coating. So we'll be doing, putting this ceramic coating on the vehicle. And also on top of that, we'll be prepping it, like I said, with their lineup, but obviously we won't be using the water spot remover or the tree sap remover. And we may not even use the all clean to begin with. There'll be certain chemicals that we're not using up on the lineup because again, it's brand new. And yes, so, but we will be prepping the vehicle using a rinse and swash. Again, it's winter time, it's super cold. It's like 27 degrees. It's cold to just wet the whole panel and all that stuff. So we're not using ceramic gloss either, but we will be using the legacy sponge, rinse and swash sponge from DIY Detail with their rinse and swash to prep the vehicle. So just go ahead, stay tuned. And if you guys like this type of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and let me know what you guys think about this process. It will be a two part video. So it will be the first one is prepping the vehicle. Then we will talk about polishing and the polish I'll be using. I'll most likely be using Rupert Uno Pure because that's what I like to use. I wish DLI detail came out with their polishing pad and polish. So that way I'm able to, you know, use the whole lineup straight through. But it is what it is. We'll just use what, what I have. And Rupert Uno Pure is not a bad polish either. That's the best polish that I like to use because you can coat right over it. I've done it before when I applied it on a BMW X5 when they received the raw ceramic coating. And I've done it as well on, you guys saw it, the Ford Mach-E because it was soft paint. Even when we did a one-stop one -stop polish, it gave this hazy type of cloudy finish. So we used Rupert Uno Pure as a second step. And then we just buff off the polish and then coat it right over it and there's no issues whatsoever. But yeah, so just stay tuned and I'll come back once we're done prepping the whole vehicle. All right, everyone, so here we are. So we're gonna prep the whole exterior of that BMW X5 45E, it's the electric vehicle. It's a carbon black metallic paint. So I did see a couple scratches, but we'll take, take care of it when we look under the lights that we have up here. But this is more of just a pre walk around, but this is pretty much what, what we will be using, right? We'll be using the oil clean for the tires and rims in conjunction with the rinse and swash eye remover and panel prep, obviously the ceramic coating. And then from there, we will finish it off with a tire dressing. But yeah, so let's just do a quick walk around just to show you guys what the condition of the vehicle is. Paint looks super smooth, feels smooth. There is just light dust, dirt, and debris that was just on there. They did peel off the plastic. It looked like they left it outside for a couple of days, which is normal. That's what dealerships do when they unveil the vehicle before they come and pick it up. But yes, yeah, so here's the tires, the wheel wells, the rims. But yeah, so this is it. He did have bird poop here. He has a little bit of bird poop that was left from whatever, but he did have like a big bird poop here. So we took care of that with the rinse and wash last night. It is dusty, it is dirty, but we will polish that out with the Rupes Uno Pure. Here you have a couple scratches, as you can see here. This is the one that I was talking about. So yes, I don't know if these are scratches, but again, we'll prep the whole vehicle, we'll wash it. It has little scratches, reds, and it is what it is, but we will polish them out. As you can see the interior from here, everything still has the plastic all the way through. So yeah, so we'll just go ahead and clean everything. And we will go ahead and start the rinse and swatch. And again, we're just using the DIY detail product line.
So as you guys can see here, we are doing the rinseless and waterless wash, whatever you guys want to call it, on the rims and tires. So I am using all clean diluted 101 inside that pump sprayer in conjunction with the rinseless wash. This way I could get the deepest clean possible. These are brand new tires, but I am ceramic coating them. I did not use an eye remover because everything felt smooth. Even when I sprayed the eye remover on the other tires, there was no purpling action coming up. So it's just a waste of time of doing it that way but yes just clean the tires deep clean rinse this wash use your microfiber towel i use the rinse this wash after i'm done cleaning the face of the rims and inside the wheel barrels to neutralize the all clean just just that way it doesn't continue cleaning and all that other stuff and remove that extra cleaning residue that an all-purpose cleaner leaves behind then you use whatever microfiber towel of your choice i like to use a throwaway microfiber towel which is the kirkland microfiber towels and after that, I just go ahead and wipe down all that dirt and grime from the wheels and tires. I know I still sound sick. I apologize in advance, but I am still trying to put out this content for you guys because this is the first review on the DIY detail ceramic coating. And I do want to show on how you could prep a whole vehicle from start to finish with just using their product line. All right, everyone, so we did the rinseless wash slash waterless, whatever you want to call it. For the wheels and tires, we're done. Nice, super clean rims and tires. And we go to the back side. I sprayed a little bit of rinseless here just because of the oversprayed of the oil clean. I do have it diluted 10 to 1. So it's a bit of a stronger dilution. So I just spray it wherever I hit the overspray. So that way it neutralizes the cleaner. Same thing as you guys saw when I cleaned the wheels and tires that I sprayed rinse this wash right before wiping down. So that way it neutralizes the cleaner. And these are just all four tires. Nice and clean. This was the last one. And we could just go ahead and move on to the rinse this wash. All right, so I have my hot water. It's pretty hot. It's like 80 degrees in here. It's nice and soft. The rinse this wash sponge has been sitting here. We'll be using rinse this wash again. I have about two and a half gallons of water, so it's half an ounce per gallon. So we're just gonna go ahead and just put 1.5 ounces just to be on the safe side, just in case it's three gallons. This is a five gallon bucket, but we just go ahead, put that in there and mix it up. And we'll let it sit there as we pre-treat the panel with the rinse wash. All right, so we're just gonna pre-treat the panel. Just so it can multiply the dirt. I like to do it the other side of the roof. So, I already pre-treated the roof. All I'm gonna do is pre-treat this side. And we'll just go ahead and get started from here. So. All right, so I just pre-treated the roof as well already. My wife is on the other side of the roof, but we'll go ahead and start top to bottom and then continue with the rest of the trucking. So here you see me using the Legacy Sponge. I've already did a review on this legacy sponge if you guys want to see that video go ahead and click on my youtube channel and watch the video does a rinse this wash scratch black paint and you guys could go ahead and check that out all right so let me just bring you guys in so look how dirty the bucket is it's gotten dirty pretty quick we did pretty much the whole vehicle my wife did the whole side she's doing the back side right now as we speak but yes, we're pretty much done. We did the whole roof. Only thing that's left is the bumper, the bumper and the hood. All right, everyone. So what you guys want to do is, again, I do have a dedicated video on the rinseless wash sponge, but you want to go ahead and pre-treat the panel. I already do have a dedicated rinseless wash video. So essentially what you really want to do is just pre-treat the whole panel with your rinseless wash and it will encapsulate and emulsify that dirt then i am just using one bucket don't worry the bucket just looks dirty it's pretty much the dye of the dirt but all that dirt and grime is actually on the bottom of the bucket and you just go ahead and do panel by panel when you are doing a hood essentially half a hood is really just one panel and then you go ahead clean off that dirt and grime 
rub it into the grid guard and go ahead and move on to the other panels and from there that is it there's nothing much to it no pressure just glide the wash sponge back and forth As we move on to the drying process, I am using the Auto Fibers Mother Fluffer drying towels. And unfortunately, I am not liking this drying towel. It's not as absorbent, but I am loving their edgeless premium microfiber towels, which I will discuss in a different video. But they're absolutely just amazing. But other than that, yes, that's my take on those towels. All right, so I'm just following up with the drying towel. This is the one from DLI Detail. This one is actually really, really absorbent. I like to do it for the lower panels just to go ahead and dry up. So one swipe. And this vehicle has no protection. It's, it's very streaky. It's very, uh, it, it doesn't absorb the water, but it is what it is. We'll deal with it. But that's what I like to use it on. Any drips. And we'll just go ahead and tackle these areas, like I said. And it's just no no pressure there are scratches there are reds there are some little spots this is like adhesive glue so we'll use like a tar remover then we're going to be using the tree and sap remover again this is like adhesive so tree sap is very sticky so let me just sp spray it right there i do have a microfiber towel i'll probably just work it in nice and light no pressure let it eat and see how this comes out came out nice and easy look at that nice and easy so let's go ahead and test it on the other spot that i saw i'm gonna go ahead and spray that no pressure just let it sit there for a little bit Nice and soft. See how it comes out. And here we go. It's gone. So very good for adhesive and tar removal. As you guys can see here, pretty much everything is gone. Maybe that's just a little scratch, but there's nothing there. It's this may be an off-label use for the tree and sap remover, but I am using it to remove the adhesive glue left behind from the window sticker at the dealership. And as you can see, with no effort, it is coming out just fine. I wouldn't use it on non-factory tinted windows. I'm not sure how safe it is on that, but you guys could go ahead and use a test spot on your own. But these are factory windows, so I am not worried about it. Then I use a rinse and swash to neutralize the tree and sap remover. And then from there, I just go ahead and buff it off nice and clean. And that is it. The residue is all gone. We're going to check the lower rocker areas. If there is no sandpaper feel, grit, or anything of that nature, there's no need to decontaminate. Again, the owner did say they took off the wrapper, waited a couple days, and they went and picked up the vehicle. So it was just outside for a couple of days. There's no way it built up any type of contamination within two to three days obviously you saw it was just dirty but that's it but let's go ahead and check it out so i'm going to spray a little bit of the rinseless right on there clay towel and let's take a listen i don't hear anything i don't feel anything on the on the clay towel so if you don't hear or see anything on the lower rocker panels you can skip the whole decontamination stuff. You're just wasting time trying to get something that's not there. Or if there's something super minuscule and minute, you could just go ahead and take it off with the polishing step. It's not gonna harm the paint. There's a difference between heavily decontaminated or not decontaminated, heavily contaminated or not contaminated at all, which is pretty much this. So if there's nothing on the lower rocker panels. There's guaranteed nothing else on top of this one so we're gonna go ahead hopefully you guys like this type of content we're gonna move on to the polishing step on the next video so stay tuned for that one or maybe i'll just do all this in one because again it's it's been fairly quick so depending how long the first part of this video is 
I may do a two part video, but yeah. So hopefully you guys like this type of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys on the next one.